Okay, today is Thursday, February 4th. It's 2.08 p.m. We think Abby might be in labor. <laughs> I've tracked, we just took a nap and I've tracked the past couple ones and it was 11 minutes apart, 10 minutes apart, eight minutes apart, seven minutes apart, six minutes apart, and then five minutes apart. <laughs> a little bit of background. Um, today's Thursday on Sunday, Abby lost her bloody show, I think it's called. That kind of freaked us out. <laughs> and I think she had a little bit of anxiety after that because we forgot that like, that was a thing. After that happened two days ago, we thought she might be in labor. She was having contractions like every 10 minutes, but they were really light. And then yesterday we woke up in the middle of the night, I guess technically this morning, it was around midnight and her contractions were like six minutes apart. Um, so all morning she's been having them and they've been really intense, way more intense she's ever had. And then after we woke up from this nap, it really kind of skyrocketed. Yesterday, our midwife came over and checked her and said that she was almost five centimeters dilated. Uh, just so you guys know what's going on. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. My water just broke all over the bathroom floor. I was just texting Julia about how I was in so much pain. I didn't know how much longer I could go, but it is 9 o'clock on February 4th. Just trying to stay calm. Uh, Julia is calling the midwife. Things are happening and I'm so excited. I'm really shaky. Water's just slowly coming out. I was at five centimeters when she checked me two days ago, almost two days ago, because it's in the middle of the night. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious to see how far I've progressed because I only have halfway to go and I've been laying in bed with contractions for about an hour. Pretty painful and they're in my back, but I got this. So it's 9 30 eight now. Um, and her contractions are starting to be like like two minutes apart. <laughs> They're getting like way closer together um, and pretty intense. So the midwife is on her way over here right now. I called her right after Abby's water broke and she said, well, it's not, they're not five minutes apart yet, so why don't you wait? And they immediately became like two minutes apart. So she'll be here soon and she's gonna check her and see how she's progressing and what exactly is going on. So you're about five centimeters still, oh. but and he is right here. You're completely thin and it's right up front. <laughs> okay, so it's been several hours. Since we talked to you last, it is now 1.30 a.m. And uh, the midwife just checked Abby again and she's still at five centimeters, which is really disappointing for her. She's gonna try and lay down and go to sleep, um, even if it's just like half an hour. And the midwife said that once the contractions pick back up again, she'll, um, we can call her. Right, you're definitely more open. Half a centimeter. I'm just so tired. And that's it right there. And you're not able to sleep. So you can't recharge. She's further along than most, but you're still out of the way for the head to the side. Just trying to come down through her pelvis. Well, you have only two options, Dolly. You have rest, or we have get better contractions, which I really think with how tired you are, you're going to need an epidural. And you guys can walk into whatever hospital that um, takes your insurance and they're going to induce her in a heartbeat because she is 41 in six days. They are not even going to look at her twice. They'll strap her to a monitor, order her an epidural, and give her pitocin. 
which right now, with the way his head is, may be what she means. Because her body is in labor, and her body says, It hurts so bad. It does, honey. It does. It hurts. It's not you. You're not a wimp. This hurts. Especially back pain is very different than normal labor. And there's nothing wrong with that, Abby. There is nothing wrong with that. We just got here. Um, they ordered the epidural and we're just waiting to get a room, I guess. We're in this triage room. I don't know. I don't know anything about hospitals. Like more than you could ever like prepare or imagine, right? Horrible. Oh, what I was thinking. And then you think, why did people do this? <laughs> I'm never doing it again. Thank God I'm married to a woman. So you can do it next. <laughs> Contractions start being real regular. Like every I've been in and out of labor, I think, for probably like three days. They would get to go around midnight. Yeah, two nights or go around midnight. And then they would slow down and then they would pick up and they would be like two minutes apart and then they would just stall. Oh my gosh, it's getting light outside. Oh, here we are at the hospital. She got in her room. We're in room 1-1. One, one. There you go. Kind of cool. How are you feeling? I'm still in pain. I'm still having back labor. Yeah. I'm just disappointed in myself. Why? I don't know. It's not your fault. You've been in labor for like three days total, really. And any problems with anesthesia that you were aware of? Alright, and then what I want you to do is relax these shoulders, chin to your chest, and then just kind of sit with poor posture. Take that small, yep, that small part of your back and kind of push it out towards me. Yep, perfect. Do you have a history of scoliosis at all? No, think she's so. pregnant. No. Okay. But I guess I've never been tracked. Okay. Sometimes that makes it a little more difficult to place. Oh gosh. But we'll we'll work with it, see what we can do, okay? okay. Here we go, pinch and burn them. So I'm back from ten. Part. Yeah. Okay, lots and lots of pressure here. Keep this position the best you can. As you enter the epidural space, it is common for you to feel a like popping sensation at that point. I want you just to hold very still, okay? Keep those shoulders dry. Yes, just shoulders relax. I've been in so much pain the past three days that I literally, you could cut me open and I'd be like, <laughs> I have no idea. It hurts. Is it normal? I don't have my contraction. Is that the way you're sitting? Yeah. The way that you're sitting. We'll so it's you. not the epidural. No. Yeah. So it's done? Yep. It's in. And you're like, and I stayed home for life? That would have been right now. You're like, and, and why was I this trying to do this at home? This is the main reason I wanted a home birth. <laughs> well, we don't make everyone have home girls. She wanted to force herself to have home Oh, yeah. okay. But here, we are. Are. <laughs> here you are. How are you feeling now that you got the epidural? Just anxious. I know. Everything is going to get better soon. I'm so thirsty. Oh, let me get you more water. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. This is probably the craziest I've ever looked on camera. But it's because I just went through like so much stuff. I have my IV. I have the epidural. Catheter. Catheter, <laughs> which I did, I probably should have gotten more epidural before I did that because I'm still feeling it. Oh, and the COVID test, that was horrible. We're doing it. Mm -hmm. Listening to baby's heart rate. Mm -hmm. I'm probably just going to try it and nap. I love you. I love you. We're going to meet our boy today. We are. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, baby. There's his name. And he's going to be in there. It's weird that this is his birthday, too. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, it's 9 a.m., so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't know. I hope so. Okay. Love you. I love you.
cute baby mama. I probably look crazy. I we both probably either. look crazy. I slept on the bathroom floor while she was laboring yeah. in the tub. So. <laughs> that was fun. It's on your urine to see if it looks like you have preeclampsia or not. It looks like you're kind of approaching with one of your liver tests. Well, we'll check your urine too. You had a big dip earlier. Um, okay. The dips aren't a big issue. If you have lots of dips in a row or it goes down and stays down, we get a little more worried. Okay, like we might have changed gears and do like, yeah, maybe you're another way. I think we're okay. You saw it, see this dip right here? This is breaking your water. Like his heart rate or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, heart rate. The top line is the heart rate pattern. Is there anything that I can do different to make sure that? No, we'll tell you. Sometimes we change your position or we give you more fluid or we put oxygen on you. We do some different tricks. Okay. We're watching Fixer Upper up here. It is 11.51, so I think it's been a while since we updated you. Um, they haven't checked her, so we don't know like if she is further along than what she was before. She was laying on her side um, doing the peanut ball, and the back labor started again, same as before. So the back labor is officially back. Um, the, they tried to put more um, epidural in to see if it helps and it does, didn't, it's the same. Um, so kind of back where we started again, I don't know why it got better and then it got worse. I think it's his position. When we got here they said she was a four, actually not a five like we thought, and now she's a five, so let's hope it goes quick. And then the benefits of it are we can see how strong your contractions are. We can also um, put a little fluid back, which might help with these dips. I've said and what I haven't said. This whole experience, the past like three days have been just this complete blur. Like we haven't slept, we haven't ate, so I don't, I'm just confused. And I, I know Abby is feeling way worse. Obviously the first epidural wasn't working. She moved it and it still didn't work. And then she took it out and put it in a different spot and then it worked. <laughs> and well in the right spot. It was working but like in the wrong spots at first. But then it finally worked, and now finally that back labor is feeling better. And she was able to take, like, I don't know, would, it, would you call it a nap or are you just resting? I feel like I've fallen asleep. She's been in and out of sleep, uh, which is well needed. Baby's heart rate was, getting, was dipping after her contractions, so then they were worried about that. Well, they gave her oxygen, and then they also are, they have a tube that's putting fluid up her so that the fluid like helps not compress him i i don't know they're doing it not me but either way those two things have been working according to them and now his heart rate is leveling out and it's normal again and once they're confident everything's going to be good 
they'll probably give her some Pitocin finally and then she can get dilated more because she's stayed the same dilation this whole time. <sighs> she's feeling much better, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> I am too. I was, oh god, this has been the worst experience. It's been very traumatic. Yeah, it's nothing like what we ever expected it to be, but it'll all be worth it in the end. Here is that yucky drink I warned you about. Did you already get the Tylenol? Yeah. Um, Emily is going to go back with you. Okay. Do you need to get like a shaver or? No. I'm just going to run this stuff back to the operating room. Well, <laughs> don't cry. No emotion. I'm doing good. You're right. I'm sorry, I'm probably making it worse. Touch, movement, pressure, that's all normal. That will never go away, unfortunately. And you'll be able to feel them like tugging, pulling, that kind of stuff. But you shouldn't feel like the sharp pinching, okay? I'm gonna head back. Julia, you get your little outfit on. Baby out there. Yeah. Right here. Okay, so we're gonna start. Incision. Okay, incision at 39. Remember, lots of tugging, lots of pulling, okay? We're gonna do it this way. You're right at the very end. So we're looking here at your uterus, just for interest sake. That lower part of you is pretty thin. I think you've been laboring a long time. I think this is just straining and straining and straining and not going. I think so too. Usually that wall is really thick at this point for the first baby. So I just don't think that, I don't, I don't think that you uh, did anything but try really hard for this. Do you hear that? You did everything you could. Everything. You could just know that. I don't want any question in your mind now, not 10 years from now. You did everything you could to get that baby here. Lots more pressure here. You're gonna feel that pressure up high, okay? So you have to get that baby out of the incision. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of high pressure, okay? Got a lot of hair. Got a lot of hair. Do you hear that? <laughs> oh, oh, there's a head. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's a good sized baby. Hey, that's a cute little baby guy. He's it. moving good. Good chunk. Oh. Look at that. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little person. No. Not a lot of swelling on that head. I don't know how much that head was getting into that pelvis, guys. So I don't think like we were real close there. <laughs> He's so beautiful. You're, you did it, baby. You hear that? That's your baby. You guys, hey. Congratulations. You did it, Sounds baby. good. Can you hear him? That's him. He's got a lot of hair. Dark hair. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's dark. You can't leave this. Yeah. You want? You can't leave this. Yeah. I'll see him any second now. Yeah. Don't you worry. Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. He is just wide eyed. Look at those eyes. Open the whole time. He's like, you're finally not pushing on my head. It's so much better.